as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, we present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon by special recording. Brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede. Young America keeps his musical knowledge up to date by listening to Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond. Every Saturday, Johnny presents a roundup of the platters that are making musical history from coast to coast. In addition, he brings such outstanding big-name guests as Teresa Brewer, the Fontaine Sisters, and Bill Haley's Comets. Guest disc jockeys from every section of the country appear regularly to report to listeners on the top tunes in each of their hometown areas. And interesting teenagers appear on Phonorama Time to bring their viewpoints on what young America is thinking about and talking about in music and other fields as well. Everyone loves Johnny Desmond, and everyone loves his Phonorama Time show. So gather your friends and fellow music fans around this Saturday and every Saturday for the musical session you can't afford to miss. Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond on Mutual over most of these stations. A big bonfire was blazing in the darkness on Malamute Creek. Around the fire stood a mob of bearded, hard-bitten miners. They had gathered there to listen to a young sourdough named Lou Burnett, who had just climbed up on a packing box to address the group. I reckon most of you know why I call this meeting tonight. For the ones who don't, I'll start from the beginning and tell you the whole story. Yeah, go ahead, Lou. Give us the facts. Ever since we first staked our claims up here on Malamute Creek, we've all been dependent on one man. No need to tell you who I'm talking about. You all know his name. Oh, we sure yeah. do. It's Arnold yeah. Colfax. That's right. Arnold Colfax. When you need grub, where do you buy it? Arnold Colfax. At three times the price you'd pay for it in Dawson. <laughs> and when you want your gold taken to the bank in Dawson... Who ships it there for you? The Colfax Express Company. For the slight charge of 10%. <laughs> it's highway robbery, that's what it is. Well, from now on, all that's going to be changed. How come, Lou? What do you got in mind? Starting tomorrow, a new express outfit is going into business. The Malamute Express, run by yours truly. <laughs> you need teams and drivers to run that kind of service, man. I've already got them. I hired them while I was down in Dawson. Huskies... Plate sleds and four experienced drivers. How about telling us your rates? I'll trade in your supplies for you at a dollar a pound. Oh, hey, oh, my friend, that's good enough for me. Me too, Lou. You sure get my business. Now, for letters and newspapers, the express charge will be two bits apiece. How about gold shipments? I'll carry your gold for two percent. Now you're really talking. Who facts won't last a month against competition like that? <laughs> Arnold Colfax ran a combination general store and cafe, which also served as the headquarters of the Colfax Express Company. He was seated in his office when a man called Jig entered with an excited look on his face. Hey, Colfax, I just came back from that miners meeting that Lou Burnett called out on the creek. Well, what do you have to say? He told him he was starting up a new express service to compete with your office. He did, uh, I figured that's what he was up to. He's offering to freight in supplies at a dollar a pound. And he says he'll ship their gold at 2%. So he thinks he's going to run me out of business. He'll do it too, boss, unless you cut your rates. You can't fight competition like that. I reckon that's what Burnett figures, too. But maybe he's in for a little surprise. What do you mean? If he aims to ship gold for the miners around here, they'll expect him to insure the shipments. So? Well, I happen to know he has much capital behind him. So if anything was to happen to those shipments, he might have a tough time making good on the laws. Yeah, I see what you mean. You got something in mind? Sure, I've got something in mind. 
You didn't think I was going to stand by and let him catch me flat-footed, did you? I reckon you're too smart for that, Colfax. Well, you reckon right. You know where that old abandoned cabin is, about ten miles north of here? Yeah, sure I do. Well, I've got two boys hiding out up there, waiting for orders from me. Ah, who are they? Speed Wiley and Red Hoffman. I uh, didn't want them showing their faces around here, just to be on the safe side. Good idea. When's the first shipment leaving? When it's sending out two drivers at noon tomorrow. Noon, uh, That means they ought to reach Mukluk Pass an hour or two after dark. Yeah, I reckon so. All right. Now, here's what you do. The first thing tomorrow morning, go on up to the cabin and pass the word to Speed Red. Tell them to cut across country and intercept the shipment at the pass. I got you. Tell them to gun the drivers and swipe the gold. We'll make a split later on. Right, boss. I reckon you must be Red Hoffman. Yeah, who are you? Name's Jig. Colfax sent me. Oh, yeah, come on in. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is my partner, Speed Wiley. Hi, Speed. Howdy. Pull up a chair. Thanks. You know, it's a good word. Two express drivers will be leaving Malamute Creek at noon today. I'll be carrying gold to the bank in Dawson. Colfax wants you two guys to cut across country and lay for him at Mucklock Pass. You ought to reach there sometime after dark. Oh? Then what? Gun the drivers and take the gold. How much will they be carrying? I don't know, but it ought to be quite a bit. A lot of miners will be shipping out their dust. It sounds like a good deal, huh, Speed? Good enough. Bring the gold back here, and then lie low till you hear from Colfax again. He says he'll make the split with you later on. Who's that? Uh, search me. Uh, take a look out the window. Hey, it's a Molly. Molly. Holy smoke. What's the matter? I know that red coat. His name's Sergeant Preston. Keep your shirt on. Maybe he won't come inside. Good morning. I'm Sergeant Preston, North West Mother Police. Uh, howdy, Sarge. Don't think I know you, do I? Uh, name's Hoffman. Red Hoffman. Mind if I come inside for a few minutes? No, why should I? Thanks. Hello there, Sergeant. Well, well, if it isn't Jig. What are you doing here? Uh, nothing in particular. I was out hunting. Just happened to drop in, that's all. Who's your partner, Red? I'm Speed Wiley. Glad to know you. You two just move in here? Yeah, we uh, figured I'd do a little prospecting up this way. I see. Where are you heading, Sarge? Dawson City, eventually. Just coming back from patrol. Saw the smoke coming out of your cabin. Thought I'd stop in and get acquainted. <laughs> Well, that's mighty friendly of you. Hey, you sit down, I'll make you a cup of coffee. All right, don't mind if I do. A short time later, Sergeant Preston left the cabin and headed southward. Early that afternoon, he arrived at the cabin of Constable Tom Frazier on Malamute Creek. Looking. Hurry, Husky. Come on, boy. You see how Tom's getting along. Well, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Tom. Come in, come in. By golly, it's good to see you. You too, King, old boy. Here, take off your parka, Sergeant. Sit down. Thanks, Tom. Where'd you come from, Dawson? No, I've been on patrol in the Peel River District. How's everything going? Oh, fairly quiet. Miners getting a few fights now and then. That's about all. Oh, uh, by the way, two men have moved into that old cabin about ten miles north of here. You know anything about them? No. In fact, I didn't even know the cabin was occupied. Who are they? My names are Red Hoffman and Speed Wiley. Pretty rough-looking customers. But an idea I've seen them back in Dawson City. Did they say what they were doing? I claim they're prospecting. <laughs> prospecting? There's no gold up that way. I know. That's what made me wonder. When I stopped off at their cabin, Jig was there. Jig? Oh. Oh, you mean the fellow who works Rhino Colfax. That's right. Said he was out hunting and just happened to drop in. But it didn't sound very convincing. He seemed rather nervous for some reason or other. Yeah, he's a sneaky sort, all right. I never did trust him or his boss, either. He hasn't been up to anything lately, has he? No, not that I know of. What about Colfax? <laughs> Looks like he may be going out of business one of these days. Huh? How so? The miners got fed up with the prices he was charging. So now Lou Burnett has started up a new express service in competition with Colfax. He's going to freight in supplies and ship gold at reasonable rates. I'm glad to hear it. It's about time someone put Colfax out of business. That's the way I feel, Sergeant. 
And the way the miners are backing up Burnett, it may not take long to do it either. Colfax has had his way just about long enough. Meanwhile, Speed Wiley and Red Hoffman had hit the trail and headed southwest soon after Sergeant Preston had left their cabin. Darkness was falling by the time they reached Mucklock Pass. After hiding their teams in a thick grove of pine trees, they took up positions overlooking the pass. About an hour later, they sighted the two express drivers approaching along the moonlit trail from Malamute Creek. Hey, here they come now, Speed. Yeah. Get your gun ready. I'll take the one in the lead. You take the other. Yeah, right. The crooks waited tensely until the two drivers came within range of their guns. And then Speed said, All right, let them have it. That got him. Come on, we gotta stop the teams. Calm down. Drivers are lying back there in the trail. Maybe we ought to go back and finish them off. Never mind them. Just grab the go and let's clear out of here. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hey, kids, we're waiting for you out at the ballpark these days. Everybody has fun cheering the players as they sock home runs, slide into base, whip through double plays. Get in on the fun, the excitement, the hot dogs, and Cracker Jack. Come out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. You can now see major or minor league baseball games free if you are 12 years or younger and bring a paying adult like mom or dad. Here's all you do to get your free ticket. Get a package of 05, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't miss the big game. Send now. to continue. On the morning after the holdup, Sergeant Preston left Malamute Creek and resumed his journey back to Dawson. As he approached Mucklock Pass, he saw a driverless sled standing on the trail with its team of huskies wrangling and snapping at each other. Okay, fire, huskies! Oh, trail of blood, King. Looks like a body's been dragged over there among those trees somewhere. <laughs> A few moments later, the sergeant discovered the two express drivers. They were lying unconscious in a sheltered spot against the wall of the cliff. One of them was too badly wounded to regain consciousness. But the other revived after the sergeant applied first aid and gave him a little brandy. Oh, my shoulder. Easy now. Better just lie still until you get your bearings. You, you're a Mountie. That's right. I'm Sergeant Preston. An express driver from Melmill Creek. Lou Burnett's outfit? Yeah. What about the other driver? Still alive, badly wounded, though. Yeah, there was a shot from ambush last night. Did you get a look at the gunman? No, the shots knocked us out. Came to... Stolen, oh, naturally. Oh, 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 Helping oh, us oh, up oh, inside. Oh, 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 Easy does it now. That's it. The small group of miners had swelled to an excited mob by the time Lou Burnett arrived at the cost of his gun. Hey, Lou, now! Hey, Lou! Lou, your express driver's got bushwhack last night. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Let me through, please. I want to talk to Sergeant Preston. All right, but you'll all have to clear off for the time being. Now, wait a minute, Constable. i got to get in and see the sergeant. I want to find out what happened. All right, inside, Lou. The rest of you stay back. Come on away from the door. How are they, Sergeant? One's in bad shape, Lou. He was shot in the chest. Other got it in the shoulder. He revived for a while, but lost consciousness again while I was bringing him here. Mm-hmm. Anything I can do to help? Not for the moment, Lou. Oh, uh, you can start some more water heating on the stove if you want to. Oh, sure thing, Sergeant. It was nearly an hour before the sergeant finished extracting the bullets and bandaging the wounds. When he was through, he washed his hands and rolled down his shirt sleeves. What do you think, Sergeant? I think we'll both recover, Lou. It'll be a long time before they're in shape to do any more driving for you. Oh, I'd sure like to get my hands on the sneaking coyotes that shot them. I have a hunch coal faxes in back of this. How much gold were they carrying? Over twenty twenty thousand dollars worth. Did you guarantee safe shipment to the miners? I'm sure, I had to. Well, I'll have to pay off the full amount. Do you have that much money? No, but I can raise it. I have five thousand in the bank, and my claim ought to sell for around fifteen thousand. In other words, this loss will wipe you out. Yep, that's about the size of it. Well, don't lose heart, Lou. You may be able to find the hold-up men and recover the gold. I, I sure hope so, Sergeant. 
Do you think King can pick up that trail? He's the best tracker in the town, right? How about it, Tom? Your team hitched up yet? All set, Sergeant. I hitched him up while you were working in the driver's seat. All right, go to Parker. Let's go. All right. Well, let me go with you, Sergeant. Well, no, you stay here and take care of these wounded men when we get back. How the drivers they got, Sarge? They gonna live? I hope so. Bullets have been extracted and they're resting quietly. Yeah. What I want to know is how about that gold was stolen? I go to refund it to Miss Lou like you claimed to Of course I am. You don't think I'd go back on my promise, do you? Oh, I ain't saying that. After all, those drivers were carrying a heavy shipment. Like Colfax said yesterday, maybe it's easier to kill. You don't savvy. That dog of Preston's is a tracker. According to Preston, he'll be able to pick up their scent and follow them. Holy smoke, I never thought of that. Speed and Red better clear out of that cabin Prado. I'll go out and warn him. Yeah, and I'll go with you. Just to make sure they kick through with our split of the gold. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. There's the wind up, the pitch, the bases are loaded, and it's a two-bagger, and the game's tied up in the last of the night. Say, kids, wouldn't you give anything to be right there at that exciting moment? Well, come out to the ballpark as guest of your favorite team. You can see major or minor league baseball games free if you're 12 years or younger. Just bring mom or dad a paying adult. To get your free ticket, here's all you do. Get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are on every ticket. Get the whole family to go. You We'll all have fun at the ballpark. For your free ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Send the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10 and you'll get two free tickets. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send now. Full moon had risen, and the northern lights flashing overhead made the sky brighter as Colfax and Jig hitched up their teams and headed north toward the cabin hideout. About three hours later, they reached their destination. Well, they've got a light burning inside the cabin. Yeah, they're still awake. Oh, it's you, Colfax. Yeah. Good morning. Howdy, Colfax. Howdy. I'm afraid you gents are going to have to mush out of here in a hurry. Yeah, what's up? The body found the two express drivers. What? He brought them in this evening. Who was it? That red coat that came snooping around here? That's right. Sergeant Preston. He's going back to the pass to pick up your trail. And his dog will be able to follow your scent. Holy mackerel. We got to get out of here, Speed. But first, there's a little matter splitting up the gold. Where is it? Over there in the corner. Uh, looks like quite a hole. How much does it come to? Around 20 grand. You can fork over half. Sure. We can, but we're not going to. Uh, don't give me that speed. That's the split we agreed on, 50-50. We've changed our minds. Meaning what? Meaning we don't like the idea of us taking all the risk and you sharing half the profit. So you'll take five grand and be satisfied. And if you don't like it... Keep your hands right where they are, speed. I figured you gents might try to welch on the deal, so I brought along this little persuader. Oh, you dirty rat. As Speed and Red glared with baffled rage at the revolver which Colfax had jerked out of his pocket, the door was suddenly kicked open. Hey, 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 Pop that gun, Come on, he's... He's Shut out the light. Whirling in the darkness, Colfax took aim at Sergeant Preston, who was silhouetted in the doorway with a constable behind him. But King had already sensed his intention. Before he could fire, the great dog sprang. Run him down, King. As he spoke, the sergeant dropped to the floor, knowing that Speed, too, was armed and would go for his gun. Hit the floor, Tom. The constable. At that moment, Jig saw his chance. Grabbing up a chair, he hurled it at the constable. As the constable staggered under the blow, Jig sprang at him, determined to make a dash for freedom. But the constable recovered and met him with a hard left to the jaw. Like this! It won't stop me. Try this! With this flying, Jig and the constable waded into each other. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston was grappling on the floor with Red, trading blows at short range. The crook fought Samson reaching for that gun. Unless you want trouble with King. 
Going out to the sled and got a lantern, Tom, while I keep these cooks covered. Right, Charlie. A moment later, Tom returned with the lantern, and then Jig and Red were handcuffed. The other two crooks were unconscious. As the sergeant attended to Speed's wound, Colfax smiled with disgust. I still don't see how you got here so fast. We didn't go to Mucklock Pass. I suspected that Speed and Red were the hold-up men, and I also suspected you'd try to warn them. So the constable and I simply hid on the north trail and followed you after you went by. Of all the rotten luck. For you, maybe. But not for Lou Burnett and the miners. When they get back this gold and you four are behind bars, this case will be closed. Last year, there was an average of 500 forest fires every day in the United States. The forest burned would make a strip nearly a mile wide around the earth at the equator. Ninety percent of these destructive fires were the result of carelessness on someone's part. The lighted cigarette carelessly flipped out the car window. A campfire left untended. A lighted match thrown into a drift of dry leaves. Or any one of many other thoughtless acts that can cause a fire. ...with the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. Thank <laughs> you.